then is putting back together his laptop because uh, something happened on our sail here <laughs> when we were sailing I had the laptop out to transfer some files and I opened the little dodger the little screen on the dodger and as I was watching the dolphins there's a giant wave that just screamed splashing into the boat and that wave went straight into the laptop and the laptop was soaked dripping wet yeah so then instantly just grabbed the laptop and put it all apart and soaked it in alcohol and put it in a bucket of rice and a couple days later here we are trying to put it back together it's not the first time I've saved this laptop from liquid from damage, damage. <laughs> Although we tried everything, this time we couldn't bring it back to life. A main reason why we wanted to come to Guatemala, aside from the fact that it's a beautiful country, is because we have some work to do on the boat. We have... Let me get here. <laughs> We have a list of things that we need to prepare Uma for before we cross the, uh, the to the Med. So, yeah, and we heard that Guatemala is a really cheap place to do all that. But, I we knew that I needed a visa to enter Guatemala, but what we didn't know, and what our last information was, was that I theoretically could get a visa on arrival. And so when we got here, we took our chances. We got here and talked to the local agent, Raul, and he tried to help us out, but turned out he couldn't. Uh, it turned out I needed a visa outside of the country of Guatemala in order to come inside of that country. So, so tomorrow morning, we're hopping on a taxi yeah. boat that's going to take us to Belize so that we can get her the Guatemalan visa. visa. And then we're going to come back, but we're going to leave the boat and Sev here so we don't have to like sail back across the bar and sail to Belize and check into Belize, which is very expensive, just to turn around and come back again. All right, perfect, perfect. Okay, thank you, that's it. All right, thank you very much, bye. Sweet. Cool, all right, all right so um, turns out if all the paperwork are in check, I should be able to get it the same day, so that's it. The next morning, we were on the first taxi boat for a bumpy one-hour trip to Punta Gorda, Belize. So I think we're about to get rained on. And they gave us these pieces of plastic to keep us dry. <laughs> All right, officially in Belize. Just cleared in. They didn't seem to care that she... Didn't have a stamp from Guatemala? Yeah, so she kind of came from Colombia and I technically checked in and out of Guatemala, but he was super friendly and yeah. uh, we're both in Belize now. So now we're getting on a bus to Belize City. There's a shotgun fringe. There's some guys shooting, shooting a shotgun us, in the building right beside but us. But it's like a tiny little building of concrete and then the guy is just shooting his shotgun. <laughs> Quite interesting. It's right behind the police station so maybe that has something to do with it. The bus is pretty cheap. There's only yeah. 12 bucks for it's each of us. It's a school bus. It's a school bus which is awesome. Yeah. And um, so we're going to be on this bus for about five and a half or six hours until yeah. we make it to Belize City. And then we will get into our Airbnb which is pretty cool. Check it out.
Home sweet home. Oh, by the way, the best deal we found as far as Airbnb was staying on a sailboat. So here we are in the marina in Belize City. Good morning guys from our little Airbnb boat. <laughs> we're on a boat but it's not our boat. It's still kind of weird that we were looking at Airbnbs to stay in Belize City and the best deal we had was to actually stay on the boat. So yeah, That was pretty good. Yeah. That was pretty good. Just felt just like home. It's a small little boat. I think it's the 32 feet. It's but a 32 it's... foot little catch rig and it's quite small but it's cozy. Uh, this morning now we're going to head to the marine office to print the paperwork we need and then Head Moment to the embassy truth. and yeah, <laughs> see how that visa thing works out. Hopefully, crossing fingers. <laughs> right. We are going to the Guatemalan embassy. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Okay. okay. And it's done. We got the visa. <laughs> I'm so happy. All this effort went well and in less than one hour we actually got it so, so back on a bus back on the taxi back on the bus and back on a water taxi to Livingston so then I kick your left to Belize to uh, get your visa I stay here on the boat to make sure everything is fine and guess what happened? I'm dragging. There was a strong wind pushing the boat around. The boat got sideways, got pushed down by the river current and couldn't put itself into its normal position because of the chain. And I can't motor because the chain is wrapped around the, the prop and the keel and I can't pull up the anchor because it's locked. Well, for now, luckily, I'm kind of stuck in the mud which is uh, around the anchorage. I've been dragging, starting from that part of the blue line all the way down here. And that's where I am right now. I called in, um, I called in harbor control and it seems like they're sending, they're sending somebody. Whew, we're free. Heading back to the anchorage. Thanks to that fisherman, we cut the uh, unravel the anchor and pull well, her back. Dear Severin, this place looks like a mess. You got a lot of cleaning up to do. Yesterday, when this, when I started dragging, I took that wine glass, I threw it on the pillows, I buried it under a mountain of cushions. So even if things would get wild. Uh, we'd still be able to drink wine. So yeah, the rescuing seemed to work fine. I think there's no damage on the boat when I motored back, everything felt good. Yeah, we made it good, well back to the anchorage. I dropped the anchor. Unfortunately, uh, too close to a fishing net. I didn't really know where I was at night and I went to the wrong spot. Don't worry, I, the fisherman, the owner of the of this net, he, he came by already and I paid him for the damage and yeah, everything's fine now, now I can clean up. We came back to Uma that same day, happy to hear that Sev handled that situation so well and intrigued to hear his little dragging adventure. So while we were gone in Belize, our boat ended up dragging and since it was the first time we've ever dragged with our Rockna. Uh, we figured it would require a little bit of explanation as to why. Okay, so here's the water. Here's our bow. Where we were anchored was only about seven feet deep. So the bottom of the water was like right there. So we had our anchor out at about a five to one scope. The problem with being in really, really shallow water is that there's not enough weight on the anchor chain to make the anchor chain go down like if we were in deeper water. So the night that we dragged, there was the current pushing against our boat this way from the river. 
and there was a lot of wind blowing our boat this way, upriver. So when the wind was stronger than the current, the boat actually drifted forwards and the chain ended up coming down and around the keel like that, back to the anchor. I think I might need to uh, make this more 3D. So the first thing I'm gonna need is some water. And I need a boat. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. But it's missing a keel. That's more like it. I think the last thing we're missing is anchor. Can I have that one? Perfect. All right, I think our visual aid is complete. But since Uma wasn't sailing, let's just take that off. Okay, we've got Uma, Sev, anchor. We came in, anchored. So here's the little Uma swinging on her chain and the current of the river was flowing this way and that's usually what held us against the anchor. But on this particular night, the wind was coming from behind and the current was really, really strong. So what happened was the wind pushed Uma up river over top of her anchor like this until the chain was tight on the side, which probably also dislodged the anchor like that. And then the wind died down, the current took over she swung back and the chain got wrapped around the keel, which at this point meant we we're probably at like a two to one scope. And with such a short scope, she started to drag. Probably the anchor was all fouled and chained by then. Eventually the chain probably came off the anchor and it recaught when he got close to the sandbar. And that's when the fisherman came and helped by pulling the stern off and unraveling the chain from the keel. And then Sev got the anchor back on deck and motored back into the anchorage. Ray re anchored on a fishing net, unfortunately. <laughs> and then had to pick up anchor again and go to a different place and anchor again. And that, we think, is what happened and why the Rockna dragged. For the first time, we've never had a drag. So it was like a perfect storm of a catastrophe where everything sort of went wrong at the same time. Well, I hope that helped explain a little bit of what happened and why our anchor ended up dragging. Come back next week when we finally go up the Rio Dulce. Cheers. I'm in Livingston, Guatemala. Then a Kika left to Belize. They applied for Kika's visa for Guatemala. And I'm back here making sure everything's fine on the boat. I've got some homework to do though and the very first and most important thing. Do a bunch of laundry.